All right, happy Sunday. Well, at least it's Sunday for me. Uh, I don't know when you're going to watch this. But it's uh, President's Day weekend, so I am looking forward to getting tomorrow off as well. But uh, I'm super excited to share with you a new tool that I've developed um, over this weekend. I got bored, so one of my friends asked me if I could help them try to forecast what they're going to end up with for retirement, just so they have an idea of uh, planning and all that. So uh, he's 30, and uh, I'm making up some numbers here, but they're they're roughly you know they're roughly in line with with his situation. But uh, he's 30. He has about uh, 60,000 saved up, and that's that's roughly his salary. It, it's actually a little less than his salary, but it's close enough. I think that if you look at most guides that are telling you, you know, where you should be to be on track for retirement, they're going to say that by age 30, you should have about one year's worth of salary, your current salary saved up. So um, I decided to kind of use those factors as a starting guide uh, to build this tool. And then I'm going to walk you through this. So before I dive into the tool, um, this video is just going to kind of go over it and how it works and the results that it gives you. But uh, my plan is to make another video and maybe two, depends on how it goes, um, to actually show you how to build this yourself using Excel. All right. So back to our case study. Um, this is a 30 year old that makes, you know, 60 to 65,000 and they have roughly uh, one year of their salary saved up in retirement. So they've been saving a little bit, you know, since they started working. And uh, the savings is divided into tax deferred, which is uh, 20,000, and then a Roth balance of 40,000. So when you add the two together, it's about 60,000. In terms of contribution, um, they're getting a 3% match and over the year, you know, that would rise with their salary. So if you're making 60000 today and you're getting a 3% match, it's only going to be $1,800. But uh, this tool is uh, to help give you an idea of where you're going to go. So I, it's hard for me to model, you know, 1800 this year, a little bit more next year when your salary increases. And then 20 years down the road, you may be getting, you know, six or $8,000, depending on your salary, whatever, right? So I'm just picking 5,000 as an average. Um, I think it's pretty reasonable. And then in terms of after-tax, you know, Roth contribution, um, because this, this person is going to be contributing Roth, and instead of maxing out, because it, it can be tough to max out, you know, the uh, 401k um, contribution, um, I'm putting it at 15,000, which is, you know, close to his, uh, his scenario. It's actually a little higher, but uh, it's something to aspire to, right? At sixty thousand to put away fifteen, it is hard. It's twenty five percent of your salary. You you can do it. People in the fire movement have done have done even uh, more, but uh, it's something that is definitely doable, and it gets easier as your income rises. But uh, for this model, I'm just going to assume that it's fifteen thousand uh, a year. And then I put inflation in here at 2.5%, pretty reasonable, so uh, we're going to stick with that. And he's 30 now, and we're going to have this go for 34, 35 years. So when I go all the way to the right here on the timeline, you're going to see that it gets to like 20, 54, 55, right? Um, so roughly 30 years, and then he's going to retire at 65. And then the model does the rest. Now, the reason I'm super excited about this model is that normally when you're doing a Monte Carlo uh, simulation, you have to write a macro or you're, you're you know, writing it in uh, Python or something like that. But with this model, which I'm going to show you guys in uh, how to build it in another video, um, it doesn't use macros at all. It just uses built-in Excel features, so uh, and it works really well. So in any... In any case, let's kind of walk you through some of the variables. Um, what I thought I would allow him to do is just change the cells in yellow. I mean, he can change anything he wants in here, but 
for, for our purpose, it's really the cells in yellow that you have to change. So your beginning tax you know, balance, Roth balance, after-tax savings if you have any, your contributions, and then pick an inflation rate. Um, the model is built on the S&P 500 returns. And I actually have a sheet in here that uh, gives you the returns from 1926 all the way to 2019. So the last full year that we had. This return is uh, with dividends reinvested, okay? Now, the toughest thing to do is to pick what time period um, you would use for the model. And what I did was I picked 1960 to 2019, uh, and then I calculated the, the average return, the mean return for that period, and then also the uh, standard deviation. So why did I pick this time period? Well. I have several reasons. I mean, if you go back to 1926, uh, the, the average return since then is going to be pretty high. It's like 13 something. I'm going off memory here, but uh, it, it, it's pretty high. Let's let's actually take a look and see. Um, 12 percent. OK, so I'm, I'm off a percent, but there was some time periods when it was like in the 13s and I felt like that was uh, just a little bit too high. The other reason that I wasn't as comfortable going back to 26, 1926 is that, uh, you know, that's a long time ago, almost 100 years, right? And the environment was completely different, you know, monetary, fiscal policy, all of that, interest rates, what have you. The, the world was just different. And I don't think we knew as much back then in terms of, you know, market theory and all that. Um, so... I'm not quite sure that the returns were representative. Uh, and then again, if I went back to, you know, something that was a lot more modern, like in the last 20 years or 30 years, um, the rate of return drops dramatically. So if I did like, you know, 2000 to, to 2019, um, 20 years, it's like 8.3% with dividends reinvested, and that seems too low. So this bit is more art than science, but... Uh, I feel like this is this is reasonable, and when I look at the results that is uh, being returned by the model, and I also compared it to my own situation. I'm I'm not 30, you know, but um, I have a lot of historical data that I've been tracking. So I went back and kind of looked at how the model performed based on my own inputs, and it was actually pretty close using these rates. So I'm comfortable. Um, leaving these inputs there. And then what happens is that the model will give you a forecasted um, end balance when you retire in today's dollar. So it's inflation adjusted, and it also ca calculates the uh, compounded annual growth rate for, for the portfolio. Now, this is a little bit higher than the mean return just because you're making contributions, and this is really not accounting for that. Okay, so keep that in mind. But basically what happens is that uh, I run a thousand scenarios and then I plot what the balance would be in 35 years um, with the median balance in this dark blue, okay? So this is kind of the average balance that you're gonna end up with in today's dollar. So it's adjusted for inflation. And then you see the three lines here, green, yellow, and red. Um, the red line is the worst case scenario. This is the 5 percentile, and the way you can read it is that 5 percent of the time, you're going to end up with this value, which is uh, just under a, a million dollars after 35 years, given all of these input. Um, so 5 percent of the time, you can expect that, right? But the inverse uh, basically says, you know, 95 percent, you can expect to have a lot more, okay? When we jump to yellow, this is kind of the 10 percentile. And uh, I call it the 10% worst case, and it gives you a value of about 1.3 in this case. Um, you know, so you can kind of take that and, and give you some sense of uh, how comfortable you should be. And then the green line is just the 25 percentile. So this means that 75% of the time you're going to end up with more than this. Okay. And then again, that blue area is just the average. On the right here is the Monte Carlo distribution of the 1,000 scenarios that it's running. Um, and to be honest, it's really 255. There's a limitation in Excel 
in how many series you can graph, and it is 255. So rather than uh, showing you all 1,000 scenarios, it's only 255, but it's pretty representative of the distribution. And uh, what this does is that it gives you an idea if there are any outliers that may be skewing the end result upwards or downwards, right? So in this one, you can see that uh, there's a green line that forecasted that you would have ended up with $130 million by, you know, age 64, 65. And yeah, that could happen. But, uh, you know, in reality, uh, it's not very likely, right? It's one out of a thousand scenarios. So, you know, you can do the math here. But what you do see is that there's a bunch of them that are clump right here. So the way this works is that as I scroll down, um, these are my results for each year. So you have the, the average, the median, I NPV it, so I adjust it for inflation. And then uh, it also gives you standard deviation. These are statistical terms that I'll go over in more detail when I show you how to make the model. But for now, you can kind of just think of how much the uh, result varies within the result set. And then down here, I calculate the percentiles at 5%, 10 and 25. And again, I adjust that for uh, inflation as well. And then down here is where it gets pretty gnarly. These are the different scenarios uh, and different end balances for the different runs. So as you can see, I mean, this is going to go to a thousand um, iterations. Okay, But once you have this set up, you can change the input as you like. And uh, the way this is set up is that I made the sheet calculate manually just because there's a lot of calculations going on. And if you have it as automatic, which is kind of the default for Excel, every time you make a change, you're going to wait for a second while the whole sheet updates. But if you want to uh, manually recalculate the sheet and just see what happens when you run a different set of a thousand simulations, you can just go to the formula tab and uh, click calculate sheet and it'll basically just rerun it and it does it pretty fast I'm gonna do it right now so uh, in this last run the forecasted end balance was 3.428 million we'll recalculate and you can see that it changed to 3.521 so it's it's pretty fast you can also see that the distribution changed slightly but uh, here's the key if you keep hitting calculate sheet you're going to get a bunch of results. So this one's 3.491. We started with 3.428, I want to say. Um, but if you keep going, what you're going to see is that even though we're running a thousand simulations in the Monte Carlo simulation, each time we hit this button, the forecasted end balance is gravitating to a certain amount. And it looks like it's between 3.3 to 3.5 or 3.6 million. It doesn't vary much more than that. Um, and this is really great because what this is saying is that for many, many different uh, scenarios, you're going to have a decent comfort level that you're going to end up around this value, this forecasted balance in 35 years. Okay. Um, again, this is using the actual S&P 500 returns over a pretty long period of time and taking into account how those returns are distributed. So some years you go up, some years you go down, sometimes you go down a lot, but then there are years you go up a lot too. But this model takes it all into account. And every time I'm hitting this calculate sheet, it's updating pretty quickly, but it goes through a thousand simulations of these just to give you, you know, a rough idea of where you're going to end up. And like I said, I think that, you know, for this case, we're oscillating between 3.3 million up to a high I saw of 3.7. So it's going to be somewhere between there. Oh, this is the lowest I've seen, 3.2. But, uh, you know, if I had to guess, I'm going to say that you're probably going to be around 3.4, given everything that, that we've inputted. So if you want to try this for yourself, um, watch my next video to see how this is built and I may just throw this up uh, on a link to share too but you know you can play around with this and say 
well, I don't have 60,000 saved up. I have something like, you know, 40 and it's split, you know, 10,000 um, tax deferred and 30,000 Roth. I'm going to get the same match and I'm going to contribute the same and let's see what happens. So you can change those input and recalculate. And again, your starting balance, it's not huge difference starting at 40,000 versus 60,000 for 30 years. What happens here is that the contributions play a much bigger factor in the end result than the starting balance. So, you know, if we were going to do a what if and say, you know what, it's going to be really tough for me to save 15,000 a year on average. I think I can do 10,000 a year. Um, you can change that input and that's going to affect the end balance a lot more than what you started with. So we can kind of see that you can see that it drops down dramatically, right? So now we're ending up in the 2.3, 2.4, 2.5 million range. Okay. But uh, the model is great for that. The other thing that it does is that it allows you to kind of look and see um, if you can retire early, right? So this fire movement, you know, financial independence to retire early. Um, there's a lot of people that are starting to look at that. And uh, what this allows you to do is that if you're 30 now, and this is your scenario, uh, you can see that you know in in 20 years, in 2040, you're you're basically going to grow from 61,000 to 845,000 in today's dollars, right? So based on your expenses and a safe rate of withdrawal and all that, you can also use this model to figure out when you could possibly retire early if that's your goal rather than you know go in the whole 30 years right so that's the other thing it does for you i highlighted this um, median npv uh, line so this is the median value that's inflation adjusted back to uh, you know today's dollars so mm -hmm. that's another way to use this uh, use this model so anyways i hope you find this useful and check back with me next week where i'm going to do kind of a live video as I build this thing pretty much from scratch. All right. I hope you enjoy. See you guys later.